My name is Jason Piskell, and I'm here to talk with you about DevOps, site reliability engineering, and respect for people, and how they're all tightly interconnected. First, we'll talk about what is DevOps and how it helps teams organize and optimize for lead time. Then we'll define site reliability engineering, or SRE, and how it helps products optimize for reliability. We'll talk about the relationship between DevOps and SRE and how reliability and lead time go hand in hand. We'll explore the five pillars and three ways of DevOps and end with a simple question to help organize our work. First, we have to ask, what is DevOps? Well, DevOps is a set of practices intended to reduce the time between committing a change to a system and that change being placed into normal production while ensuring high quality. One of the primary ideas in DevOps is shifting left. Shifting left means to take operational tasks and business tasks, everything, and shift it towards the front of the development cycle. This is intended to drive deeper collaboration between the development group, uh, the operational group, and the business to ensure that whatever we produce is fit for purpose. This also includes getting customer feedback as frequently as possible. If we look at the graphic here, we can see at the top uh, what's referred to as the delivery pipeline or the feedback loop. On the right of the uh, cycle there, you can see build, test, and release. These are frequently referred to as the de delivery pipeline. These are things that we want to make sure are uh, very well structured and easy to automate, things that traditionally have taken people a lot of time and effort to do and have introduced risk into operating our systems. As we move farther to the left on the uh, loop there, we can see monitor and plan. Uh, and these are how we take insight from what we've released and use that to plan what we're doing. So planning is how we decide what to do. It's how we decide how to do it. It's the effort we put into increasing the feature set of what we are plan to release, and also its operability. Then we build it. However, that means to you and your organization, uh, you take what you've planned to do, you put that into action, and you test it to make sure that it does what you intended it to do. Part of planning is defining what are those test cases. This way we know when we're done. Next, we release it. In some models for DevOps, you'll see release broken up into deploy and operate. Uh, for our purpose, uh, we can just call that release, but that includes everything it takes to get what you're working on into the hands of users and make sure that, it's, that it is actually working for them. And finally, we monitor, and we want to monitor everything. We want to understand how people are using it. Uh, is it performing properly? What does good performance even mean? And we'll get more into that a little bit later. So ultimately, what we find is DevOps is a set of practices and principles that focus on teamwork or collaboration, automation, and quality in order to reduce lead time or the time between making a change and deploying it to production. Now, site, relia uh, site reliability engineering is what happens when you treat infrastructure like a software problem. Another way of thinking about this is that SRE is what happens when you ask softwares, software engineers to design an operations team. In SRE, there are four types of work. There's software engineering, system engineering, overhead, and toil. The first two, software engineering and system engineering, are where we want people to be spending most of their focus. Uh, in software engineering, this is the creation of new features, new product sets, things that people or systems that use our product will use. System engineering is what it takes to operate it. These are making the system more operable, making our build and release process simpler and more automated. Anything it takes to make it, to make it take less manual intervention to get things working and keep them working. Toil are any of those repetitive, manual, automatable tasks that we end up doing a lot of, but don't really add long-term value. This could be answering tickets, this could be doing password resets, this could be any number of things that we just keep having to do as people when maybe it's not that hard to automate it, or maybe it's very hard to automate it, but even still, over time, the benefit of that effort will come back tenfold as people can focus on harder work. And overhead is anything that doesn't fall into those other three categories. These are things that it, we have to do in the course of running a business or managing an organization, mandatory trainings, HR things, uh, even personal training and knowledge searching. Uh, sometimes prototypes can be considered overhead, but these are things that are not directly software engineering, system engineering, or toil. We also have in SRE the concept of eight tenets. And these tenets are availability, 
And as we go through these, we go over what kind of questions these mean we have to ask. How do we manage these? So when we talk about availability, we have to ask, what is the right level of availability for our product or service? Frequently, what we find is 100% or five nines is really not necessary. It's expensive to do. It takes a lot of extra work. And most of the time, people don't need something to be available all of the time. I have a hammer in my garage, and if I am not actually building something with it, I don't need it to be available. I can lend it out if I don't have a project to do. It doesn't need to be available 100% of the time. Latency is what does the system have to wait for, or what does the user have to wait for? Uh, what's acceptable? What isn't? When we talk about things like latency, we might ask, does this thing need to run in real time, or can it run overnight or once a week? What are the requirements and how does it need to perform? Which leads us into performance. What are the targets for the performance of the system? We can't really understand how to mac uh, maximize its reliability or any of the other tenets without understanding what does performance really mean? Next, we come to efficiency, and this is about how are system resources and honestly money, this is about managing cost. How are these resources being used and how do they relate to performance? Uh, if we need five nines, it's going to be more expensive. We're gonna to need to maintain more infrastructure more readily than if we can figure out exactly when the clients need to use what we need to do. For change management, we found that roughly 70% of outages happen when changes are being made to a live system. So we need to manage our change management in, in a way that mitigates this. But again, as we shift things left, as we automate more, we can drop that number down because our changes become safer. We have fewer mistakes. Monitoring. This is how we keep track of a system's health and avail availability. The questions to ask are, what do we monitor? How do we decide when something needs additional attention? The system should be able to decide when a person needs to take an action. It should not be sending out an alert that says, hey, do we need to do something? It should know something needs to be done or not. Emergency response. Now, when we talk about the tenet of emergency response, we have to understand that reliability is measured by mean time to failure and mean time to repair, which is kind of the average rate of how often the system breaks and how long it takes to bring it back. Another concept that we have to be aware of here is human intervention adds significant latency into the system. Therefore, uh, we should design our systems to be able to detect and resolve emergencies uh, as best as it can. And we should only alert people and bring people in when a new type of failure occurs or there's a situation that requires human action or insight. Even if a system is failing frequently, if it can recover without involving a person, it will have better availability than a system that requires a hands-on recovery. Finally, we come to capacity planning. Capacity is critical to availability and performance. Without being able to manage capacity, we can't effectively manage the reliability of the product. So again, treating all of these things as if they are, well, at their core, these are non-functional requirements, but treating them as if they're functional requirements, treating them as if these are a software problem helps guide us down a human-friendly path, honestly. It makes our system more reliable, more predictable and easier to operate so that our people can focus on adding value to the system or adding value to our clients. Ultimately, and this may sound a little bit familiar, site reliability engineering is a set of practices and principles that focus on teamwork or collaboration, automation and quality in order to improve the reliability of a product or system. It sounds a whole lot like how we defined DevOps on the previous slide, right? That's because it is automation, quality and teamwork. Both of these drive us towards reliability. Both of these drive down lead time by reducing waste in the system. The only major difference between SRE and DevOps is what they're trying to optimize. One is optimizes reliability, the other optimizes lead time, and we can have both. It's also important to note that SRE is a logical extension of DevOps. This is coming straight from the book. Uh, Right in the uh, introduction, they flat out say SRE is a logical extension of DevOps. It is a specific implementation with some idiosyncratic extensions. That's it. And what we can find as we look through this, we can uh, apply what are called the five pillars of, uh, of DevOps, understand what they are and see how SRE does all of them in a way that works across the board, even for product development. One is reduce organizational silos. This is all about shifting left. Again, we wanna bring all of the people involved in 
creating and operating and working with the product closer together. We want to get all as much knowledge as required to create something as close to creation time as possible. This is one of the concepts behind uh, acceptance test driven development. And SRE does that by tearing down the wall between the operations group and the engineering group. We want to accept failure as normal. We accept risk. We embrace risk. We learn when things fail. And this is how we build better test harnesses. This is how we build better automations. This is how we understand what it is we need to do. We talk about things like toil, about the types of tickets that we might have to constantly and repeatedly resolve. This gives us a good idea of things that we can automate to make the system more operable and reduce the latency and reduce the mean time to resolve. So we accept failure as normal and we drive towards it because this is what lets us innovate fearlessly. SRE puts uh, even additional uh, measures around that by specifically allowing for failures above certain levels of reliability issues. We're talking about service level indicators and service level objectives. So the third pillar is implementing gradual change. Now, part of DevOps is that feedback cycle, but we don't want to make a big bang transformation. What we want to do is try little things, bring things closer, implement testing more effectively, automate our build process, automate our deployment process, but do them one at a time and measure how they change things. This way we know that we are chasing continuous improvement. We want to make sure that we are learning continuously, that we're experimenting, and that we are moving in the right direction. And again, occasionally we're going to move in the wrong direction. This is part of accepting failure as normal. But if we do it gradually, we can try things and say, you know what, this didn't work, and undo them. So we implement our changes gradually so that we can reduce the cost of failure. We leverage tooling and automation. That's the fourth pillar. Uh, we've talked a lot about automating the build cycle, automating deployment, automating testing. SRE mentioned toil. Uh, one of the key things to do is automate as much of that away as possible. So again, another instance of SRE and DevOps being really in lockstep. And the fifth pillar is measure everything. And that means everything. We want to understand how the system is behaving. We want to understand how people are using it. We really need to know what do our tests look like? How long does it take to produce value? How much value is being produced? Another important point is that DevOps does not imply any definition for value. That is between the system, the organization that produces the system, and the users of whatever product is being produced. We have to understand what people value, what produces value for the product, for the organization, and for the users. And taking these metrics to the next level allows us to, again, further automate away the things that the robots can handle effectively that we don't need to have people worrying about. Now, on top of these, we have the three, what are called the three ways of DevOps. Those are flow, feedback, and continual learning and experimentation. This is about managing the flow of work through the system. Again, if we are making gradual changes and getting feedback and automating our deployments, and monitoring everything and using that to plan, what we have is a constant flow of small bits of incremental value through the system. This really energizes how we can get feedback because we are constantly in contact with our users, constantly monitoring what they're doing, and constantly learning from it and using that to plan the next work that we're going to do. So that's how flow and feedback interconnect. And as we use that feedback to improve how we deliver work and what makes our system more operatable, that's how we apply our continual learning and experimentation. Again, implement gradual changes both to the product, to the organization, and to how we produce value for our customers. And none of this works without resting on a foundation of the two fundamental concepts of lean thinking. Those are continuous improvement and respect for people. So how do we apply this? Well, one simple way is to ask one question. We Analyze the work we need to do, understand that there's something that needs to be done or that some, something that someone is asking us to do. And we ask the question, who does it? Is this something that has uh, a defined rule set around it? Is this something that happens a lot that maybe doesn't take a lot of human insight or creativity to, to resolve? Something that people do over and over and over again, rather than removing the fundamental source of whatever is causing these repeatable things. 
if that's the case, maybe we have a robot do it. Alternately, if it's something that adds value to the system, that, is, that requires some creativity or problem solving put together, some way of leveraging a human experience or ingenuity, this is something for people to do. This is the software engineering, the system engineering. The system can't engineer itself, but it can do most of its own operation. There will always be things that the system can't do, things that we couldn't foresee, and that's where we need people to do stuff. But what we need them to do is figure out how to take things and make them more automatable. And the, another type of work, it doesn't add value to the system. Even if it can be automated, sometimes the best bet, the thing that makes it the most reliable, is simply to not do it or to stop doing it. Sometimes we have work that we just don't need to do. If you think about your own organizations. Uh, are there people that need to approve things in it? How often do they get a type of approval that they never say no to? Maybe that sort of thing is a type of waste. We don't have to do it. We can discard that type of work. Maybe there are certain types of tickets that uh, just go away if we solve a higher level problem. We can discard that type of work and simply never do it again. If the source problem never happens, then we don't even need an automation to fix it. We can just stop doing things, and there's nothing better than work that never had to be done. All of this comes down to respect for people. If you look behind me, it's been there the whole time. Continuous improvement, respect for people. These are the fundamental concepts underlying DevOps and SRE, which again is really just a specific, a specific implementation of DevOps. They are ultimately expressions of respect for people by systematically removing work that people don't need to be focused on to give them work that sets them alight. We want people doing things that leverage their problem solving abilities, that leverage their creativity, that leverage their insight, their ingenuity, and their experience. So everything we can do to allow people to focus more time using their insight, ingenuity, experience, their creativity, the things that make them uniquely people, that's what DevOps is really about. It's about focusing on our users as people, what they really need, what problem do they need to solve, using that to feed back into the system to make sure that the product we give them is actually solving their problem. So if I can leave you with one thing, it's this. Respect for people and continuous improvement is key. Focus on those two things and everything else will fall into place. The core of DevOps is optimizing the system for the people that build the product, the people that use the product, the people that operate the product. Listen to your users, listen to your engineers, and use that insight to make the best product possible. Thank you.